Welcome back. Uh, gonna do a little bit of show and tell, tell, and then we'll jump in and take a look at some code. So Google Cloud Storage kind of gave people a challenge of using uh, Next, right? Anybody get that one done? X credit using Next? No. And uh, so there's some examples in here that use Next. And, uh, and then what was the other X credit challenge I gave? was to do something else with Google Cloud Storage. Set ACLs, right? Improve it. That was it. Access control list. Anybody do that? No. Yes? No. Just kind of motioning. All right. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get that one done, proving the ACL deal. But I cleaned up these uh, examples right here. So basically, I looked through the Google Cloud Storage example, the example which is available on their website. When you look at like App Engine, Google Cloud, they have an example. So, Golang App Engine, you know, and uh, and then uh, storing data and Google Cloud Storage and uh, using Cloud Storage. I think this is just yeah. So here, here's the example right here. So you could view this code on GitHub and then look at the raw code. Right, and fair amount of code here. So I just kind of went through and picked out pieces and kind of broke them down into little more manageable, more consumable chunks, and uh, and started uh, putting those together in here. So this these these files changed here, and maybe we'll look at some of them. And then we got the photo blog working with Google Cloud Storage. So we'll go through that code in detail here in a moment. And JavaScript and AJAX still in process for me, so I wasn't able to make any headway. I put together just some simple JavaScript pathway for learning it. But uh, the to-do list, put together a to-do list here, which shows uh, AJAX in action. And then uh, here's a HTTP where we kind of get some JSON back. And, uh, and you know, I'll show you that one too. And then a self-destructing message and a CSV example. And then there's a movie website which is uh, in process, but not fully functional. So that's all on my to-do list. So I thought we'd just kind of do a little bit of like, hey, let's take a look at each of those and see them running, and then we'll step in and look at the code. So first one would be like photo blog, uh, the photo blog example. And that would be in 52. Let me make this smaller. And uh, O2. So starting to get some proficiency, I think, you know, with this stuff and a lot more familiarity. How many people show hands are starting to feel a little bit of proficiency and, and familiarity? You're looking at the code, you're understanding it, and you're feeling some proficiency like, well, I'm actually able to start doing stuff. Awesome. So uh, just choose a file, choose a photo, and I have some here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Yay. Cool. And if we look at that on uh, Google Cloud Console and go into that project and go to storage. And there are those two files. So pretty cool. Google Cloud running. So I'm going to get rid of those files. Just keep this all clean. And get rid of the cookie. And shut it down. Control C. OK. And then uh, to-do list, 0, 0.55. I don't know if there's anything in there. It's just it. Log in. So that's App Engine authentication. Done. 
So a little to-do list. <clears throat> kind of cool. And uh, then the HTTP Giphy. So it's making an API call and just asking. <laughs> Asking for Giffy's, Jiffy's, I don't know, how do you say it? That's my favorite right there. I think I've showed that in class before. Oh, <laughs> how many people have had that experience when writing programs? And that's the top of a tree out here. So I don't think that cat, I don't know, maybe it used up a couple of its nine lives, or maybe it used them all up in one fail swoop. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, you could drop in a qu query up here. So what get jiffy giffy, what which one should I search for? Somebody give me a new one. Nobody has one? Explosions. <laughs> Plural. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Not sure why she's, was that Taylor Swift? <laughs> Wacky. Kind of fun. Where's the explosion on, oh, back behind them. Well, that was a trip. Wonder what they're doing. Does that phone explode? Crazy. Endless. Okay. And then self destructing message. If you should decide to accept. So here's your self destructing message secret ID. All right, and so when I click that, I will have uh, 10 seconds, I think, in which I could see this. And then when I try to go back here, it's still there. No longer there. So basically that's uh, Snapchat, is that the one, or the messages destruct? And some information on crypto, and then a little CSV example here, so some cool examples. And. Uh, stock symbol running looks like nothing happened but when I go to my terminal stock data and then we could do stuff with that so you could do things like uh, Let's correlate stock symbols. What do you want to correlate? Goog and let's gonna have a high correlation. They're both stocks. A B N. What is it? A A B N. Pretty high correlation. 
Actually, not that high. 0.3. <clears throat> Goog and what's another one? Yeah. But not tech. <coughs> GM, GM? <coughs> cars and techs. 0.19. So. All right, so it's just a little bit of a, here's my whack-a-mole suite. And then last bit of show and tell here. It's crazy. Do we have the copyrights to this music? Yeah, it was open. Oh, it's open. Cool. Are you going to get any points? I'm getting points. <laughs> it gets better. Just wait. A little like transition between levels. Yeah, oh, after you hit him. There we go. Now we're at a new level. Ooh, I missed that one. It's the first miss. Ten hits. And that guy that's moving around there, he actually detects when your mount enters him, or enters the area where you can click on him, it will start running. So if your mount is already on him, then he can run. It's pretty cool. He's running from the mouth. Keeps getting bigger. So as it keeps getting smaller, that gets harder and harder. And he will be moving. At, he moves at such a speed that it takes him the same amount of time to get to the first corner. And so if he gets smaller, he's moving faster, so he can get there faster. This is my this is my equivalent to his whack of president from uh, last night. I think this will be a two-hour course. <laughs> we'll do the whole course on whack-a-mole. <laughs> How you built that, that's awesome. Totally cool. I forgot I had music in it, though. <laughs> All right, let's look at the code. Before uh, we start, anybody have questions? Cool. So you'll notice here I took out uh, data. I just called this photo blog cookie memcache. Google Cloud Storage, so there's no data store and there's no URL component. So I, uh, I just pulled those out so I didn't combine them all. Slowly we were working with Cookie Memcache Data Store, Cookie Memcache uh, Data Store URL, right? And before we had Cookie uh, Memcache, anyhow. Um, this one took out the data store URL part. And uh, this, this is a going to be a little bit of a new design from what we've sort of been looking at in class. So I created a struct here and that struct holds aggregate data structure basically let's put all different pieces of data together, right? And so struct's called a session and it holds an ID and then it's going to hold pictures which will just be a map. And I use the map over the slice because then I could just store the picture name and, uh, and if there's a picture in there already with that name. They'll have, you know, names which are calculated based upon the file, a, a SHA, and uh, a hash, and, and if there's one in there already, it just overwrites it with the new data. So basically, these are just the names, which I'll be able to pull out, and I know those names are on the server. And, uh, and then my request, my response, and context. And so I just put all those in there so that I could access them. But once I have a type, I can attach methods to it. And so you attach a method to, you, you attach a type to a function, becomes a method of that type by using a receiver. And so here's a function put session, right? And this would just be a normal function if I didn't have this here. A normal function. But then when I add a receiver to it, it becomes a method of type session. So any type which is of type session, any value which is of type session, um, will have that method available to it. Okay, and so then I could just, I don't have to pass around my response, my request, all that stuff. I could just do, oh, here, give me my context, right? S context. Or give me my ID, S ID, right? Where S is that 
value of that type that got that has this method attached to it. Okay. I don't think you need to dereference that, do you? I do. Hmm. Where are right here? Uh, line seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Oh, I don't think. Mm, maybe I think that was me experimenting, trying to figure out this the problem to the null yeah. pointer. We'll take it out and see what happens. Yeah. If if it does work without it, it's probably better because then you're just passing a memory address. And passing the address instead the of. All right, we'll try it without. It was working before. Let's see what happens. G -g 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 -g. Uh, get status. Get and da 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 da. Get commit dash m and uh, removes reference. Dereference. And. Oh, I'm still in the. Cool, it looks like all's well. So in moving memory addresses are much smaller than that big old, than the big sessions uh, struct. So you don't want to copy the entire session struct because that's however many fields, however big each one of those are, all put together. It's like that's a lot of stuff. Compared yeah, to just the memory address is pretty small comparatively. Yeah. So as we uh, as the program runs, we're just passing around the memory address of that value of that type. So here I create a variable s. It'll have its of type uh, session, right? And uh, it'll have values, different fields with values. And so instead of passing around that entire data structure, I'm just passing around the memory address. So new, and we'll learn about this in just a second. I want to start at the beginning, but new returns a pointer to uh, a pointer to a value uh, a pointer to a value uh, and the value is set to the zero value, right? So similar to C++, the new statement creates, creates a, a pointer to something of that type. So in Go, however, this is actually this, oops, we lost video. <laughs> the cable's not that big. <laughs> right here, it's wrapped around there. All right, so in Go, this would actually be the equivalent of saying S is equal to the address over here of uh, session like that. Those two lines would be equivalent. So uh, in Go new basically says um, return the address of the session. Yeah, cre create create a new thing of the type that pa of passed to it and return a pointer to it. When I was first learning the difference between new and make, I used the mnemonic device. I got a new dog. It's a pointer. I named it zero. <laughs> yeah, in Go, everything is defaulted to zero if you don't have a particular value for it. So, so when you knew a struct, all the contents of said struct, or of anything actually, whatever you knew, it, its contents will be the, will be the zero value. So, new is a bit more readable than the equivalent that I put up there, though. Yeah, just so you could see that again. It's like line 29 there. It's like, okay, what does that mean? Whereas 28 makes a bit more sense. You can tell what that means at first glance. <clears throat> okay, so just looking at this code from the beginning. This is my uh, Google Cloud Storage bucket. So that's where I'm going to be storing my files. <coughs> Anybody not know how you figure out your bucket name? Raise your hand. Everybody knows where you get your bucket name? Cool. And uh, just a variable TBLs, which will be of type template from package template, a point or two, a template from package template. And then template must means that I'm going to parse this file, and if there's an error, my program's going to panic and stop. Okay, So I, I need to parse this, otherwise my program won't run. And then I'm going to store that in TBLs. 
and, uh, and then handle func, a route, and fav icon, HTTP not found handler. All right, so that's all understandable. Anybody have questions about that? And then uh, index. So if uh, it's not root, then HP not found, yeah. Sorry, Addy, but what did must mean again? Must is, uh, you know, hey, this occurs. So it's in the template package. And if we go look at the template package, index template, we have must, which uh, takes a template and an error and returns a pointer to a template. Well, when we do parse files, parse files returns a template and an error. So template and an error, template and an error. OK, since this returns a template and an error, we could put parse files right here. Parse files will return a template and an error. And then must runs and gives us back just a template. So it handles the error for us. And what does must do? Must is a helper that wraps a call to a function returning a template, pointer to a template and an error, and panics if the error is not nil. It is intended for use in variable initialization such as this. So we don't have to handle the error. That's it. And, uh, and that makes the declaration of all that stuff a little bit more succinct. And so then we have uh, you know, this bit right here. So if uh, we're not at root, if something else is coming in, then not found since the forward slash catches everything. Right, like this only catches fav icon ico, but if I had this here, that would catch fav icon ico forward slash my dog. Like if somebody made that request, that would catch that. Without that line right there, it goes right here, and so that would be forward slash fav icon ico forward slash my dog would now get caught here, right? Which route gets used? And so then we run git session, and so what does git session do? So get session is just a function. It's not a method attached to uh, type session, right? And uh, that's the only, this and index are the only functions in here that aren't attached to session. Everything else is a method. And so uh, get session takes the response and the request and returns a pointer to a session. So a pointer to a session is this. So it's going to give us back a session with all this stuff. So I get my context. And then I do a uh, new session, s. And now I'm going to populate all this as pictures, as request, response, context, but not ID. Because I'm going to get my ID. I'm either going to find my ID in my cookie or I'm going to create a new ID, right? Like, you know, somebody's made a request. Is the ID there? Oh, it's in the cookie, right? There's the ID. It's in the cookie. Oh, they don't have a cookie? Well, let me create an ID for you. Put it in the cookie. Write that cookie to your machine. Now I have my ID. So we're going to do that just down below in the code. But right at the get go, type session. Pictures, request, response, context. Okay, so I just sort of set all those. So the request is this request. The response is that response. The context is the context. So now I have all those available inside my data structure to use. And so I uh, chose chose to do it this way because when you look at that thing I was just showing you, let me bring it back up. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, but we're still, yeah, the projector's still missing red. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> See if this is better. It's probably better for the projector. So here's how the, the Google did it, right? And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to do that in our example. All right, they created a struct and they're holding the context the response. I also put the request in there. They're holding some other things in there. Right? But they're saying, hey, the session holds this stuff. The session holds this stuff. All right. So I populate all those. And with pictures, I did, uh, right? Because right now, if uh, when I do new, if that's the equivalent of, it's not Python. I mean, this is not PHP. Yeah, Python doesn't use um, Session, there we go. 
if that's the equivalent, then everything in here gets set to zero value. So ID is going to be zero, right? Uh, these things would be zero, whatever their zero value are is, and uh, and you know, and then this would be zero value. Well, the zero value of a map would be what? So we could kind of play with that if we wanted, and just see what happens. Actually, put these together right here. Let's see which example. So here I have a. I want to do the map one first. So var x map string, right? So when I run that, I get a map, and then I print that out, map string, and then I print out the type right there, and then I try to put something into the map, and assignment to entry in nil map. Okay. So maps need to be made because they have an underlying data structure. So maps, channels, slices all have an underlying data structure. And so new doesn't, there's a difference between new and make. So make will make that data structure. It'll make the map. New just returns a pointer, the address, and everything's a zero value, okay? So map and maps underlying type is similar but not quite equivalent to a struct that has a pointer to wherever the map's actual data is being stored as well as a list of all keys so that it can use a range uh, you, so you can range over easily as well as other things like the length of the map and a couple other mild details like that. So because it's actually a struct with underlying data when you just knew it or create the variables with bar or something, map, some string, string its underlying data is all zeros, including the pointer to where it's actually storing all its data is a nil pointer. So it's a entry in a nil map. So make will actually populate a map data structure and a map uh, struct and return that. And so you can see that sort of illustrated here. I create a variable x, it's of this type. And I print it out, and it says, hey, it's a map. And I print the type, and it says, hey, I'm of this type. And I say, okay, well, let me put something in there. My key's going to be that. My value's going to be this. And it says, I'm sorry, that's a nil map, right? So basically, that says that map hasn't been made yet. And if we change that, and you can see the difference there, the, these lines are all the same, right? The top three lines are the same. You see the top three lines aren't changing, right? But now I do, hey, let's assign to x, let's make that map. So x is still a map of type string string, but now we've made a map. And now I could assign there, right? And it prints it out. So it's no longer a nil map, it's been made. So that's all to sort of explain this right here. All right? I need to make that map. Even as though it's of type map, right now it'd be like a nil map. Well, I need to make it so I could store stuff in it trying to see if I can figure out. There, there's a way to view exactly what the underlying contents of a map or slice is. I'm going to see if I can't get that working. And then this just sort of illustrates the difference between make and new. So here we just said variable x of this type. And then we said make, and it makes it. Well, with new, like I could say x is, x is an int. Give me a new int. And that's going to return a pointer to an int. So what's that type? gives me a pointer to an int. And if I print out what x is, it's the address. Well, I could dereference that and I say, hey, give me the value at that address. That's what that operator, ampers, the star does, dereferences, right? And so I could say assign to the value at that memory address. So the value, hold on, the value at that memory address, assign 42. And then I could print out the value. So give me the value at that memory address that memory address, the value at that memory address. As, can you guys see that all right? That's pretty small, huh? 
That's better. And so that is uh, giving me 42. So that's just showing you new. And then request a cookie. And the cookie's name will be session ID. And if there's an error or if the cookie value is empty, then we're going to create a new ID and then create a cookie. And uh, when we request a cookie, it gives us back a pointer to a cookie, right? So we're going to create a cookie and then get its address. Because here, it gives us back a pointer to a cookie and we signed it there. Here, if we don't have a cookie, we'll give me a cookie give me its address and assign it to cookie. So that way in cookie we're always start storing a pointer to a cookie. And session ID and then value session ID string. So give me the ID and store that in the cookie. That's all we're storing is that UUID. This is the session ID. That's all we're storing in the cookie. So every request we get that unique ID back and we know we could associate that with our data storage. And then we're going to go ahead. They got it working. You did? Yep. Do you have a URL? Yeah. Here we go. So when you run, when you run, when you panic, it will actually show you the arguments on the. Uh, so right there, you can see the arguments, uh, the actual values it's passing. No further down. I, I've got a laser pointer. Oh. The heck where? So those are the actual values that are being passed, like underlying values. So it's actually sending a nil pointer, and I'm not sure what this is, probably some error huh. message type. So if you actually go up and uncomment line 9 and run it again, you'll see they're actually filled with actual values. So up above, you uncomment line 9 here. X, uh, var x map. Is so 10? this is the nil pointer, and that's pointing to a map which hasn't been allocated so, in memory yet. Is that yeah, right? So yeah, a map is actually made up of two, actually made up of two different values. It's a one variable, but it's got two internal values, and one of them is the pointer to the underlying type, and the other one's the uh, probably the size. I'm not sure actually. So this is the pointer to the underlying type right here, and yeah. it hasn't been made yet, so it's yes. pointing to nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you uncomment line ten there. Or nine, or whatever that one that's commented, and run it again. Dang viewer, that's cool. I was just taking that in. <laughs> now you can see it's actually filled out with stuff. Pointing to something. That's probably capacity. That second argument. That's probably capacity. Hmm. That's cool. So same thing happens. Slices are actually made up of three values: the pointer to the underlying array, the length, and the uh, side, the length, and the capacity. Sweet. All right, so then from memcache, we're going to get uh, pass center contacts and then our ID. So memcache get takes in the context in some sort of a key, which is a string. And so we're passing in cookie value, which is that session ID, the UUID. And that will give us back right, a pointer to an item and an error. And a memcache item has key value and all this other stuff, right? all these other fields. So we have that item here. But if the error was not nil, so there's an error, it means we didn't get anything from memcache. So we're going to take SID and set it to the cookie value. And the cookie value, that value either came from when we asked for the cookie and they had it. And so, okay, we got an ID there. Or we just created an ID and stuck it in the cookie, right? And now we're saying, okay, our SID is now the cookie value and we run list bucket. We have to put the file names from Google Cloud Storage into, uh, into our uh, data structure before we take our data structure and put it into memcache. So let's get all this user's files on, on uh, Google Cloud, right? Know their file names, and now let's put that into memcache because memcache didn't have anything because we had an error, right? So the first thing is make sure we have the right ID. So we're adding that to our data structure, right, for our session. And then we do this function list bucket. List bucket is a method attached to. Uh, attached to uh, 
our type session. And so we do storage new client, we pass in the context, gives us back a client, right? And we do the error handling, we have to defer client close. And then we do a, uh, a query, and so the query is going to be, you know, just based upon the prefix will be the user's ID, session ID. So give me all the files that, you know, are prefixed with this user's ID. And, uh, and then we do a, our bucket, get, you know, from this bucket, get a list of all of the, and what does list give us? List gives us back an object list, all of the objects, right? With this context and this query. And so we get all of our objects back. And now we're going to range over those objects the results. And so list gives us objects. And then we have results, which is a slice of object attributes. And object attributes has bucket name and different stuff, right? The attributes of an object. So as we range over our object's results, we get an object. And so we're going to say, OK, to our data structure, our session data structure, pictures, we want to add the object name and, and store the object name as both the key and the value. Now I want it as the key, and maybe there's a better way to write this, but I want it as the, if so, let me know. I want it as the key because if I r store something there again, I'm just going to overwrite whatever was there. And I want it as the value because when I range over my pictures in my template or whatever, I want, uh, I want the value to be the name because I'm going to use the name, right? So I've, I've, it looks like I'm storing it twice, but the, the map is just a really nice structure for like collecting things which are unique. So I won't have two entries for this user of the same picture, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, there's no set data structure in the standard library. And then I do S put session. Now I'm not sure what's going on with uh, WebStorm because you guys can't see that. Oh, you can. It's red, but you can see it. This is red on my screen. And uh, so it actually works out well that this doesn't show red. <laughs> And um, and I'm not sure why it shows up as uh, as as red because put session uh, it'll totally run and sometimes that goes away if I like just change the order of things my put session is right down here and just make sure I didn't detach it or anything like that yeah it's totally fine it's right there so anyhow you might need to update your uh, Go plugin or something ooh I think you're right that's a good idea. All right, so that was a list uh, list bucket, right? And so then it calls put session, and when it puts the session, it's going to so list bucket puts the session. It's going to marshal my data structure. That's the address that's being passed in, and so that gives me back a JSON in byte slice, right? And then I'm going to do memcache set and pass in the context, and uh, and then give it a memcache item with a key and a value, so I'm setting that. And I'm going to set the cookie and session ID and ID, right? So that's just basically putting the session. So all of that came from right here, get session, because get session ran all this, created a new session, added all that, asked for the cookie, got the ID, tried to get things from memcache, couldn't find it, so we gave the current ID to the session and then we listed all, got all the files off of Google Cloud Storage, and then we stored all that in Memcache, and we reset the cookie right there, okay? And then, want to create a Memcache item. So, Marshlix, we, we need that item here because we, let's see, we get an item there, right there. Byte slice, I might have some code redundancy, unmarshal. SID cookie value. Create a memcache item. Don't need that. JSON Marshall byte slice. Just trying to think through if I if I'm doing things twice because put session just did that. I create get my JSON and then I get my new memcache item and then I um Marshall. Okay, All right. So I either got my item from right here. Right, but if I didn't get my item from there, we just created a new item in memcache right here with all of that stuff. However, I still need that item, and so what I'm going to do is just create an item right here, 
and then unmarshal that item value into my data structure, reset the ID, and then put that. There might be some code redundancy in there. What are your thoughts? Anybody have any thoughts on that? Is that redundant? Seemed like there's a good reason I did that. Because we already put a session when we do this part. But, you know, okay, here's what it is. If, uh, if we did have an item, if we don't have an item, then this right here puts everything into memcache and also stores the cookie. If we do have an item, then this code didn't run, right? And we still need to put our session. That's the reason. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, so, all right, I need to put my session. Well, to do that, I need to make sure that my, my session ID is the right ID. And here's my session ID. And before, the only place I did that was in the error handling right there. So here I'm making sure, okay, my ID has the, the most current value, right? Because here I either got it from the cookie or I created one. And then here, you know, I set it right there. I guess I could have put that up there. But I set it right here. And then before that, I need to make sure that, you know, uh, my structure has the current values. And so if I've just updated everything and this is my new data structure, then I need to have that in the item, right? So otherwise my item is this, I don't know. You, are you guys tracing it? It's hard for me to kind of say it. How many people see it? Raise your hand. If you mean uh, if we see... Uh, see the logic. See the reason why you have, why you're actually doing the same thing twice. Then, yeah. Then yeah, because yeah. you, have a, you have an if statement there. Yeah, thank you. you have the list bucket needs the ID yeah. set before you call it, so you've got it up there. But then you also need to make sure you set the S ID after you've replaced S with unmarshal on line 67. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I might have uh, cookie value that, that, that. Yeah, because this one might have gotten back from memcache. Uh, well, it would have had the same ID. Anyhow. Logic puzzles. You can reflect on that uh, in, your, in your own time. All right, so then we put session, and we return that session. So here's the session. I get the session back. And if a request method is post, I'm uploading a photo. So how do I handle the upload of a photo? S request form file data. So from my template, data, right? Input type file, name data, ink type, multi part form data. So it allows me to upload a file. So I said, all right, give me that file that was uploaded. That returns a multi part file, a header, and an error. Handle the error if there's an error. Defer the close of the file. I only want to allow JPEG or JPG. So this checks is your file extension, and we saw this last week, JPEG. And then I want to make a new file name. So here it's basically, you know, take the file and, and get the, the hash out of that. SHA-1 new, copy the multipart file to that, and then print it out. Assign it to name, and then uh, just log that, and then reset the read-write head on the file, since we just read the file, set it back to the beginning. And then put the file, storage new cl client. So we get the client, defer the close, Client bucket, give it the bucket, give it the object name, right? We're going to do this. Give me a new writer. Set ACL, access permission. Copy the file to the writer so it writes the file to Google Cloud. And uh, close the writer. Handle the error. Update the session. So as pictures now has this file. And now let's put that session. So it restores it in memcache and make sure the cookie's set. 
So we've seen list bucket and put file or upload file. We've seen the session struct and get session and put session. And we've seen index. So pretty bare bones. You know, and I really like the, uh, there's a quote one time somebody wrote, um, uh, sorry I didn't write, uh, sorry I wrote such a long letter. I did not have time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long letter. Letter, Right? You know, like if you're just banging out code, well then a whole bunch of code I got it working. But then to like, you know, have it be brief takes time. Questions? Yeah. You want to take five minutes and look it over yourself and then see if you have questions? How many people want to do that? One hand. It's not very many. Two hands, three hands. All right, so it's on GitHub, so why don't you take a couple minutes and look it over, think about it yourself, and then if you have questions, you could ask them. And I'll just play Giphy's up here. Pause the end. Yeah, thanks. All right, so no real questions. I'm going to stop this video, and then we'll pick up uh, the new stuff in the next video.